Hello ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about natural selection. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk about nature section too. No thanks, I've got it. Fine. Anyways, natural selection is better explained with an example before a boring definition. Actually, it's better explained like this. Natural selection is the process by which organisms with variations most suited to their environment survive and leave more offspring. Thank you for all the help, but that is really hard to understand. Who here likes nature? What about bugs? What about grasshoppers? What? Everyone should love grasshoppers. Okay, all right, here is the example. Mommy grasshoppers have enough eggs for way more that can live in their environment, but some of her babies are yellow and some are green. The environment that they live in is all green. All the trees, all the bushes, all the grass, they're all green. These grasshoppers have to hide from bugs that are going to eat them. Which do you think the other bugs would want to eat? Green or yellow? Uh, I know what it is. Oh, I know it. Uh, what is it? What is it? I know what it is. This is actually in the 570 to 580 nanometer range. What she means is yellow. The other bugs would eat yellow grasshoppers because they are more visible. Does that make sense? No. What is not making sense? The world. <laughs> Moving on. There are four different things that contribute to natural selection. The first one, the first one is simple as heritability. Oh yeah, simple as that. Ha <laughs> ha. What does that mean? Heritability is a big fancy word for being able to um, get the genes from your parents. The ability to be inherited or passed down from generation. What does that have to do with nature, nature section? It's natural selection. Good point. Now let's get back to grasshoppers for a second. The grasshoppers that are yellow because of heritability are probably going to get dead. Well, uh, yes. They're going to get eaten because those... Uh, they're going to get eaten because they are yellow, but the ones that do survive are green because of their genes. Yes, it's all about good genes. I got this pair from Brandy Melville, and they are so cute. Oh, and I got this one from Aeropostal. Oh, and this one from Target. Oh, my God, they're so cute. Not those kind of genes. The kind of genes that is locusts or a region of DNA that encodes a functional RNA or a protein product that is a molecular unit of heredity. In other words, the stuff that your mom and dad gives you in your DNA. The next factor in natural selection is the one is that one population has individuals with different characteristics. That means phenotypes. What's a phenotype? Phenotypes and are body size, hair color, and stuff like that. The grasshoppers have different colors, yellow and green, have the different colors yellow and green. If grasshoppers were all one color, there would be no natural selection. Are we done yet? I have places to go, people to see. Another factor in natural selection is given that all the resources, uh, the green hoppers, green grasshoppers are more likely to be on top. Almost, almost done. The last factor in natural selection is completion. No, it's competi competition. Actually, it is called the struggle for existence. Like I said before, mom grasshoppers make more eggs that can survive. One part of that is because most won't survive to reproduce. The other part is overpopulation. Things happen like famine and then the ones that do survive continue to reproduce and make more grasshoppers or whatever kind of animal. Are we done now? We are really close. Natural selection produces evolutionary change because it changes genetic composition of entire populations. This occurs through interactions between individuals and their environment. Created using Powtoon.